So I was just going to follow up with the part two I left at trying to build a query builder. Actually, I had to rename the class because ASP.NET already has a class called query builder. So now it's just query helper. But it's more of a command builder than anything. But I'm sure that's taken too. So I'm just going to leave that alone. But uh, the solution I came up with was to use three string builders that I can build simultaneously as I uh, write my queries through them. And, and also there's these, uh, I'll create a list of these tuples, which will be the add with parameters that I can, that actually I uh, build right at the end. So it's, uh, so everything happens automatic. Whenever I pass in a piece of data to the function, to a function, it uh, adds it to the parameters and takes care of it for me. But uh, but I created some functions that are specific to my database. So uh, like uh, getting a map of uh, of a set of data is a very common thing. You you just need this one value and you can figure out what page on my website it's going to exist on. So uh, so I do have these very specific queries that I can that I can build up in those string builders and then combine them all at the end and just uh, build them. Let's uh, pull up the uh, See what class would it be in? I guess just base service. Yet not all of them are uh, done yet, but th there's one. Oh, I can uh, split that up, I guess. But yeah, uh, this is basically what it would look like when I go to use it. So that's uh, not the best example because that's just kind of using, that's just a generic query. Uh, So I guess that's uh, I, I guess that example would look familiar. You can easily tell what it's up to. But this one, it does a whole lot more. There's a lot less you can see. So it's uh, so this is the type of stuff I was looking for. It's uh, so I want to select a map. You know, then I can join the. Uh, I can join it, and build it, and then I'm basically returning uh, an address to the website or all the IDs, and that, that's what I would use to go and create these drop-down menus right here. So this is the thing that I built, but let's, uh, but you can see these all update. And that's what uh, that's what that one function would let me do, is I'm able to go and and build these uh, drop recreate these drop downs every time they change. All right, I'm back. Uh, so the other thing was was how to do the uh, the transients and scopes. So I have. Uh, the base service, and we can ignore this one for now, uh, but we can ignore those two for now because I haven't done anything with them. But we have the base service, which is a transient, and then the library and page service, which inherit from the base service. And that's uh, and that's what I got. So everything that uh, 
that the base service can do, I can do with these uh, these other two classes, and you know, and there's going to be like there was going to be crossovers, you know, things that I would keep reusing over and over, and there have been. So I wanted those functions not to be repeated in multiple classes. So I use a little bit of class inheritance and I do that again just in my razor pages. But let's uh So in my models, I don't know if I if I should have called it a model, but I created a model and this inherits from page model. This uh this class right here is like the base uh, razor page class, and that's what gives you the on get method. So I created this class to inherit from that. Now all my classes in my library, go pull one down. They inherit from that base page so uh, I did create a uh, a constructor that takes it an ID that's gonna that's because this is a, a static piece of data and that'll always be the same throughout the lifetime of the whole project unless I remake the page then I would need to give it a new ID but uh the uh, for efficiency, I guess. It's kind of the, the trick of my website. It's uh, I can use that one value to, to map to a set of data. So that, that's why I do it. So I'm hopefully it'll be uh, make things a little more efficient. And, and I suppose I might create a default constructor that'll calculate that automatically because I can do it through these values right here. And obviously writing that kind of a query is going to be a little bit more uh, verbose than just using a topic ID. But uh, but I, I guess that's basically it. You know, I'm still in the middle of the refactor, but but let's go uh, go ahead and look what I'm able to do on my website. 